Hello, everybody. Uh, it's good to have you around. Thank you for registering for this training course. We appreciate your time. We know very well you've got a schedule that is very tight, but as uh, training is always important as anything, you know, for making informed decision. Uh, today, uh, we are going to uh, do the online training. Uh, we have got uh, two modules. This is the first module. And the first module is uh, covering the status of the negotiations of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, we will be basically looking at what is basically going on with the negotiation at the present moment and uh, what really has been the outcome, which uh, will be moving us probably away from negotiations over to implementation. Okay, let's move, uh, let's uh, start and go on. Uh, the outline, uh, our outline today is uh, based on a brief introduction where we will be just talking about what is going on. And then we'll go to the current status of the negotiation. Under the current status of the negotiation, we'll be covering the science and the agency, mitigation, adaptation, loss and damage, means of implementations, uh, I have to uh, flag this one out that uh, mitigation, adaptation, and loss and damage is now the new uh, uh, focal points within the Paris Agreement. And then the means of implementations, they support all those uh, uh, three elements. And then we'll move on to transparency of actions and support. And then we'll be covering other uh, items briefly, items such as the global stock take collaboration, ACE, uh, climate and gender and response measure. Of course, there are other items that uh, are, are being discussed here, including the system and network observation and system uh, network, uh, including other uh, items that uh, come under the considered bodies that have been established in uh, the, the CGE, uh, the Adaptation Committee, the Nairobi Work Program, to mention a few, but I will uh, probably uh, request learners to get further information from the uh, reference that has been made at the end of uh, uh, the study guide. So let's move on now, and uh, we're moving on to the introduction. Uh, a document that has come out from the negotiation, which uh, we all view it as an important guiding document, is what is called the Glasgow Climate Pact. This document is talked about almost all the climate cycles. So what is this document? This document is basically a set of decisions ranging from stranding effort to be resilient to climate change uh, towards capping greenhouse gas emissions and to provide necessary finance for both mitigation and adaptation. This document is also a reaffirming the party's duties to fulfill the pledges provided uh, under the $100 billion annually from developed to developing countries. And it's got a number of uh, uh, programs and ad hoc working groups and high level segment as uh, we will be seeing uh, uh, as we go on. But on top of this document, uh, apart from the work program to decide the 2025 financial places, uh, during the last COP in Glasgow, uh, there were a number of uh, pledges some of these pledges were made into uh, under the presidential high level, and others were made inside events, which were all trying to make sure that uh, the whole world does take ambitious action and does have enough finance to provide for adaptation and loss and damage. So now, if we look at to the ambitious climate actions and support, we see that uh, 
on top of the graph that is shown there. Uh, to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change, uh, parties have already set themselves the long-term temperature goal of uh, below two degrees uh, pre-industrial levels and efforts to uh, reach 1.5. We also see that uh, they have uh, established uh, the, the adaptation uh, uh, goal, which uh, where climate where parties have climate resilient and low carbon emission uh, development, and also we see uh, the financial flows. So these are the uh, goals that uh, uh, must be implemented if we are to uh, reach an ambitious climate. Uh, actions and support. Now, in terms of actions, we've got the mitigation and adaptation uh, where we need to act, take actions. But these actions, they need to be assisted by the means of implementation, especially for developing countries. Uh, they will need finance for adaptation and mitigation. They will need technology development and transfer from adaptation and mitigation. They will also need capacity, especially institutional capacity and human capacity in developing countries so that they can undertake the various actions required uh, for them in their respective countries. But on top of taking actions, there is a need to be accountable. This is the only way that the world will know whether uh, actions taken are directed towards reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, they are directed towards building resilience to the uh, impact of climate change. So uh, for parties in order to be able to access accountabilities, whether individual or aggregated level, they have developed the transparency of actions and support. This is where they will be reporting on uh, uh, what actions they've taken and what kind of support has been provided uh, is, uh, in terms of the means of uh, implementation. There's also the global stock take where progress in towards achieving the Paris Agreement global temperature will be assessed and reviewed and there will be uh, some outcome guidance on how uh, parties can raise their ambitions. There will also be a facilitation facilitating implementation and compliance. This is the part where parties will be uh, review their implementation and see as whether they are being compliance to uh, their, their ambitions, especially under the NTC, or they are they, can they be tracked and what kind of guidance will they be given if they are not compliant to assist them so that they can comply. So let's move on. Uh, now, uh, parallel to the negotiations, uh, uh, last negotiations in Glasgow, COP26, uh, there was a high level summit. Uh, in this high level summit, certain a number of pledges were made, uh, which were also directed towards uh, assisting with uh, raising the ambitions so that uh, uh, our efforts will uh, be directed towards meeting the temperature goal. Uh, we saw that uh, there were almost 90% uh, of the global emission where parties uh, uh, have already pledged a net zero emission reduction by the end of the century. We saw that there was a strong pledge for deforestation and the farming, uh, uh, whereby uh, uh, the, the world uh, came together. Some of those leaders who were there agreed to stop and reverse deforestation by the year uh, 2030. And they also pledged uh, 14 billion dollar uh, pounds of private and public funds to assist with these uh, efforts. Uh, they also uh, strongly encourage uh, parties to ensure that uh, food security is uh, secured. And then uh, uh, there is also low uh, carbon and deforestation free. 
There was also a pledge on transport that uh, uh, those major companies would stop selling uh, done electric cars also uh, at least by 2040. There was also uh, pledges for climate finance for the indigenous community at a, a rate, a range of uh, close to 1.7 billion. Again, uh, we saw, uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, pledges on the clean technology, which included power supply uh, in terms of uh, energy efficiency and uh, effective. Uh, the road transport in terms of uh, making sure that uh, uh, the road transport system is also efficient and effective, including steel, hydrogen, agriculture, carbon dioxide removals. Under the coal and methane, we saw that uh, parties placed to phase down coal and, and support to coal power plant and reduce uh, uh, the emission uh, resulting from methane. Now we're moving on now to the current status of uh, negotiations. Uh, uh, we've done the introduction and now we're coming to the uh, details of uh, uh, what is currently uh, the situation under the negotiations. We, we have some ongoing work under the science and agency uh, where we see that now the process has fully embraced the science as it's been given by the IPCC uh, and other reports from the global and regional community on the state of climate, especially the World Meteorological Organization. Something that was not really uh, fully accepted in the past. Uh, I think uh, the process was uh, uh, struggling to accept in full IPCC reports. And as such, the IPCC has been further invited to report at the, uh, the, the just uh, uh, stage uh, Substar climate meeting, which was uh, in Bonn, June this year. And then uh, the science is also uh, calling that the implementation should reflect equity and the principle of CDPR, a uh, common but differentiated response and respective capacity in light of uh, different national circumstances. Now, as regards to mitigation, what is now going on in the mitigation? Uh, well, uh, we saw that uh, parties updated their national development uh, contributions. Uh, there were no strategy development before COP26. And uh, the analysis that were done there, it was clear that uh, uh, they are still far short of what is expected us to do uh, if we want to keep the temperature, uh, the global temperature within the two degrees reach and possibly moving to the 1.5. Now, Following that, parties then decided to establish a work program to urgently scale up mitigation ambition. And then uh, they task uh, the SBs, the subsidiary body for science and technology and the subsidiary body for implementation to draft a decision for consideration and adoption by the next uh, conference of the parties of uh, meeting service as the uh, parties of the Paris Agreement, which is the CMA4, uh, that will be taking place in uh, this coming November. Uh, this recommendation should complement the work of the Global Stock Take. We will be talking briefly about what's going on in the Global Stock Take at a later stage. And then uh, there are some parties which probably have not communicated the annual or updated NTC. And then it was agreed that they must do so as soon as possible, but this must be done before the next call. Mm. Uh, the, the process will also be conducting annually a high level ministerial roundtable on the pre-2030 ambitions 
and this will be beginning at the Fort uh, uh, CMA, which is again uh, this coming November uh, in Egypt. So this were the these are the current work that is ongoing to make sure that uh, uh, parties do uh, raise their ambitions and they're also encouraged to also uh, work on their strategies, improve uh, the low carbon emission development strategies that they submit where they, they pledge for a, a net zero uh, emission uh, most likely uh, halfway to the century, and then this will be realized at the end of uh, the century. Moving on, uh, in adaptation, adaptation is covering the adaptation itself, uh, adaptation committee, uh, adaptation climate finance for NAPS and adaptation committee, and uh, financing the adaptation. All along, we know that uh, uh, the focus of negotiations has always been in mitigation, and there was less uh, attention given to adaptation. However, uh, with the establishment of the Paris Agreement, the adoption of the Paris Agreement, to say, uh, we see adaptation featuring very well uh, as we, the Paris Agreement, decided to have the adaptation uh, global goal on adaptation. But uh, before then, uh, under the Cancun Agreement, uh, there were several uh, bodies, constituted bodies, which were established. And one of those bodies uh, which was established was the Adaptation Committee. Uh, now, the Adaptation Committee uh, is uh, now working on uh, how to expedite its work on developing a draft supplemental guide for voluntary use by parties in communicating their adaptation information. And there it was expected to produce a technical paper on methodologies for assessing adaptation needs. This is on top of any other work that has been given to the adaptation committee we will be uh, seeing at the later stage, maybe in lesson module two, what uh, role the adaptation committee has already played within the global code on adaptation. Now, the process has already established uh, 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 guidance for uh, submission of adaptation communication and uh, uh, parties who have not done so are, are, are actually been encouraged to do so, uh, uh, submit the adaptation committee communications before the next uh, conference of the parties uh, uh, serving as a meeting of the parties to the Paris Agreement, which is CM4, again, coming in December this year, so that they can provide a timely input to the global structure. Uh, we also see that there is a process that has been established, uh, which is going on, uh, on, on the global goal on adaptation for effective implementation of the Paris Agreement, uh, whereby uh, parties are already working on a, a comprehensive two-year class called Shame Al Sheikh work program on this, which has already started. Uh, it's two years is expected to be uh, concluded uh, um, in 2023. 